The pictures you can see then are of our boys arriving up there at St Andrews. And after back-to-back -back home games and a point in the week, Bristol City will be looking to get back on the winning trail. They play in front of a sold-out away end at St Andrews this afternoon. The Robins sit 14th in the table after 12 games with the Blues five places lower. Birmingham City had a promising start to the season but are without a win in three games and have scored 60% of their points so far this season season away from home. Hello and welcome to Robins TV live from our studio here at Ashton Gate. Joining me for this one is professional development phase coach Ali Hines. Ali, um, the, the Coventry certainly came for a point in the week and they got it and we let them have it to a certain extent. Yeah, no, it was, it was good to get a clean sheet. Um, obviously, we, we uh, unfortunate not to score and hopefully we can build on that today. We've seen some fantastic City performances recently. There's obviously a will to win and a will to perform, isn't there? Mm, there definitely is, yeah. No, the will to win is definitely there. Um, and the performance it wasn't as good the other night, but it's definitely some building blocks there for us to create chances and go and score some goals. So where is a game like today going to be won and lost? So we're obviously above mm. the Blues in the table. Um, they've not had a great run of it recently. Mm. So where, where are the edges we can maximise? I think we've got to deal with their direct play at times. Um, but I think with us, I think we had 45 crosses the other night. We need to get our success rate better with that. I mean, chances wise, I think we will create chances. Obviously, Tommy back in the team again. Um, and he was on a great goal scoring run before he came out of the team. So I think we'll be, we'll be good to go today. Yeah, Birmingham City quite a bullish team. From what I can remember of previous encounters, you know, they're quite tough. They stand mm. up we've, mm. we've, and we've struggled with that before. Yeah, we? they're direct. You've got to be up for the fight today. So you, you've got to deal with the contact. You've got to deal with the first balls, pick up the second balls. And then, then we have to be good enough to play, which is key. Um, Nigel talked in the week, we'll find out the team news in a bit, but Nigel talked in the week about Troy Deeney. Uh, he's worked with him before, obviously, mm -hmm. at Watford mm -hmm. as well. Quite a big personality. If he's yeah. involved today, he's certainly someone we're going to have to watch. Yeah, of course. He's, he's one of the key men against with them and Hogan work together well. Uh, we just need to stop Troy if he starts today. Um, being effective, really, getting hold of the ball. But again, it's going to be a physical battle, but um, I'm sure we can deal with it. OK, all right. More from you, Ali, as we go. We'll get some more of Ali's expertise uh, and his opinion as we go through the course of this afternoon. Right, time to check who is playing in this Skybet Championship match. With all the detail, well, it's Bristol City's version of Johnny Bravo. Affectionately, no, if you don't know, Google it. Uh, if, you, if you want the team news, it's Toby Osborne now. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Downsy. Yes, two sides looking to get back to winning ways then this afternoon. Three changes, first of all, for the Blues as John Eustace and his side look to bounce back from defeat against Middlesbrough. Out goes Jordan Graham, who caused City all manner of problems in this fixture last season. In comes the experience of Harley Dean. Manchester United loanee Hannibal comes into the starting 11, having completed 45 minutes on Wednesday evening. He replaces Bacardi. Cunha. After the talk about Troy Deeney's strengths this week, he isn't included in the 11. George Hall comes in to replace him. The Birmingham side today are captained by 35-year-old John Ruddy, who's enjoying consistent football against uh, uh, compared to last season in between the sticks, having joined from Midlands rivals Wolves in the summer. Joby Bellingham, younger brother of Jude, is among the substitutes, looking, of course, to follow in his footsteps quite an act to follow. Two changes for Bristol City with Alex Scott returning from suspension. He is replacing the injured Cal Naismith, whose uh, knock is not as serious as first anticipated. Hopefully he's back in a red shirt very quickly. The second sees Semenyo drop to the bench. Tommy Conway returns. That would suggest Andy King drops into that back three. A void he filled impeccably against Coventry on Tuesday evening. A different proposition, though, in store today up against the Blues and their top scorer, 
Sarah Scott Hogan. A young midfield too in Scott and Masengo. The former looking to get his first goal of the season and the latter still searching for his first goal for Bristol City. Beyond them in the inform Naki Wells. He's supported again today by Conway and Andy Vyman whose energy and endeavour gave the Reds a lift on Tuesday night. Tim Closer returned to the bench as well with Dylan Kaji getting a second appearance. Might he make his league debut today? Now it's time to hear from the manager Nigel Pearson who was asked how his side planned to secure three points. We need to back ourselves to win it. It's uh, We had a, a bad experience here last season which um, we've talked about uh, this week but we are we think we're a different proposition this season and uh, but we have to go out and prove it week in week out so um, yeah the, the table's very tight uh, we just got to make sure that we keep picking results up to, to give ourselves the best chance of, of pushing up the league Alex Scott comes back from suspension yeah. today, obviously in place of Cal Naismith, who's injured. Tommy Conway in for Anton Semenyo. Is it a case of just still managing Anton and making sure he's not playing too many minutes too early? There is an element of that, but there's also a very big element that Tommy Conway is our top scorer. And, uh, and, and quite a few of our players have got a bit of credit. Uh, let's put it like that. So um, it's, it's, it's nice to have that type of a... Um, a selection issue when you've got as many uh, talented forwards that we've got. You know, Chris uh, Chris Martin's desperate to force his way back in as well. Um, young Sam Bell, we've got here with us, although he's not, he doesn't make the bench today. But you know, we've got some uh, we've got some really positive options. We've got to go out there today and perform them. There's the gaffer talking to George West there up at St Andrews. Um, I mean, he, he talks a lot of sense. He says that how he how it is, uh, doesn't he, Nigel Pearson? Um, his thoughts, his views, he's very direct with the players, which I guess they appreciate. No, definitely. I think uh, communication is, is the key, uh, especially from the gaffer. He's honest, he's clear uh, in what he wants and what he believes in. So, no, it's good. And from, um, from a sort of player pathway perspective, so great to see the youngsters that have come through the system. We say it, you know, so often on Robins TV, but, you know, the Tommy Conways, the Alex Scotts, uh, you know, being there on a regular basis now must be very satisfying. No, it's great to see. Uh, and we want to see them improve every week, really. Um, and they've done a good job, but we want them to kick on again. And obviously Dylan Kaji making the bench again today, which is great to see. Good athlete, he can break the play up, can score goals. So it'd be great to see him get some game time sometime soon. And the, the, the players, that were obviously the under-21s at the moment, still flying uh, mm. undefeated as well. They drew with Millwall in the week. Yeah. There's more still to come, isn't there, which is so exciting. Yeah, definitely. Well, as, as coaches, we're never happy. We always want more. We're always pushing the players, and the players are brilliant with working with us and always wanting more as well. So, yeah, we're in a, we're in a real positive place with the academy, and long may that continue. Good stuff. All right, Ali, thanks very much for now. Right, now, we might not have won on Wednesday night, but... We didn't concede a goal, and we've certainly scored some absolute crackers. So we thought this 12 games in was an ideal time to check out some of the best goals of the season so far. Masengo gives possession back to Bristol City. Scott finds the pass into Naki Wells, one-on-one. -on -one. He makes no mistake. Wells is up and running for the season. Ashton Gate erupts. Fantastic play. It's what I spoke about earlier, about the importance of playing forwards, willing runners to run beyond the back line. Excellent finish as well by Naki Wells. Fantastic goal. Seven seconds. 
inside Derby and Ashton Gate. And this boy is really making his mark in the early weeks of the season. Fourth goal of the season. What a fine header. from Naki Wells got what it deserved. About the way that was making its way towards goal and it's off the post, oh, Bristol City off the hook. Go on, that's one. Take him on. Semenya, him this on. is where he's most dangerous. Can he take on the defender Bye. and get a strike away? Whoa! It's another for Semenya. He belts it into that top corner. Ruthless stuff for Bristol City. Byman, he's away from Don Hyam. And looking dangerous here, Bristol City. Wales and Conway in the middle. Conway the target! to do that and Tommy Conway opens the scoring here in Lancashire defence into attack Wyman sprinting away down the right he had two to aim for went for Conway who really couldn't miss some absolutely cracking goals there. And does Andy Vyman ever stop running? Right, still to come on the way after the break, a record-breaking trip to St Andrews. We relive that, and we're getting up close and personal with City keeper Stefan Bajic. All still to come after this short break. <laughs> When the red, red robin comes ba 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 and along, along. The robins, who this season have gone bobbing along right into the second division of the English Football League. The robins. Gate in Bristol, you'll know that as the signature tune of Bristol City, the Robins. So we've got all this outdoor space here and it's perfect for companies to come in, whether they're small or large. So we cater for maybe a team of 12 or a team of 800. They can come here, have a really positive experience and be rewarded for all their hard work in the office or whatever industry they're from. As we've got such a big company, a lot of us don't see each other. Being able for the first time to get everyone out together in one place doing an activity together was great for team bonding and boosting that morale. We can um, hone in on specific skills such as communication, leadership, teamwork, resilience. Here we've got a 400 metre military assault course, which is fantastic for team building. If you want a morale booster, this is the place to come.
You're watching Robins TV live from Ashton Gate ahead of the Skybet Championship clash between Birmingham City and Bristol City. More preview on the way very shortly indeed and indeed for our overseas viewers, of course, the full game from three o'clock. Right now, though, he hasn't been here very long, but our new goalkeeper, Stefan Bajic, is starting to feel at home here at Bristol City. We sent our reporter Dan White along to chat up, not chat up, to chat to the club's <laughs> latest shot stopper. Stefan, welcome to Robins TV. It's been uh, it's been three months, I think, since you signed for Bristol City. How has your time been in our city so far? Really good. Um, I arrived in June. Uh, not easy during three months because I arrived with a wrist injury, but now it's good wrist. Wrist is the past, and now I am ready to to play football and to train with my team. Absolutely, and uh, you know how long, how have you found living in Bristol so far? What do you make of the place? Uh, I live now in centre of Bristol. It's really nice. I love the city. It's different, like French, because um, apartment house is very different, and I like. I like the culture is different and it's really nice to discover a new, yes, a new city, a new culture, new people, so I am very happy. Excellent. You talked there about your uh, wrist when you arrived. Yes. You're obviously back fighting fit now, fully fit. We, we haven't seen you on the pitch just yet, but what's it been like learning with Pat Mountain and also training with Dan Bentley, of course? Really good because uh, when I decide to to sign here, uh, I would like to discover a new new coach goalkeeper because um, um, England uh, school goalkeeper is different like friends. So it's really good for me to discover um, new new exercise new. A new player and when I see when I speak with Pat with Dan it's uh, not similar but uh, it's excited to to see other exercise other position and it's good to to improve so your your journey starts in your home country of France so what was life like for young Stefan I think you were picked up by Saint Etienne at six years old Yes, yes, I began football in Saint-Etienne, in the school academy, and um, I signed my first professional contract um, 16 years old, my first game with 17, and after I played with, uh, I think, 10, 11 games with uh, my, my, my team, it was really good because uh, I was born in Saint-Étienne, my family and my friends lived in Saint-Étienne. So play here, it was, it was a really good experience and I learned a lot of things. And then of course you find yourself here and we talked about how much you're enjoying Bristol so far. I, I guess the aim for you is to make sure you, you get that debut soon, your home debut and you know, playing for Bristol City. Yes, yes, I, uh, now I, I am ready to play. I, train uh, all the all the session to be ready and when a manager will give me an opportunity i will try to to take this opportunity and to help to help team to win well stefan good luck and we look forward to seeing you out there Thanks. at some point soon Stefan Bajic chatting to Dan White there. I think I was right the first time. They've clearly got chemistry. Uh, right, let's move on to some highlights now. It's back to 2018 we go. Now, we hadn't won at St Andrews in 25 years. It was a happy hunting ground for our boys. That, of course, before Fumaro Gigi.
I certainly knew how to celebrate, didn't he, our fan? He did. <laughs> so it's like shove in the head there, I thought, as well. Um, let, let's go back to Stefan, because he's obviously mm. been quite involved in uh, the under-21s and playing for you guys, and you say he's just a lovely guy. No, fantastic. Uh, really good goalkeeper. So, you know, his starting position is fantastic. He's so quick off the line. Um, he deals with balls over the top, but also he comes and deals with crosses, makes big saves. So, I know he's a, he's a great addition to the goalkeeping squad. How long can this unbeaten run continue for the under-21s, do you reckon? <laughs> don't want to speak too soon. Uh, old cliche, we take each game as it comes, but um, hopefully we can keep building on that run. But a cracking season so far. Yeah, really good, really good. And, and the players have done fantastic, as well as the staff. Uh, we just hope we can keep pushing. And there we go. Look, the boys uh, warming up there. What's going through their minds here just before kick-off? You know, we've got like seven, ten minutes to go. What, what, what's going through the boys? I think they're, they're remembering their roles and responsibilities, what they have to do in the game. Um, remembering our philosophy, how they want to play, how they, the style of play that we want, to, we want to achieve today. So, yeah, I think there's individual bits as well, but there's the unit parts that they've got to work together and, and a team collective goal as well. And Paddy there putting them through the paces. I mean, fitness is just so key because if you've not got the miles in the tank, there's so much running to be done. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. And, and like you said, Dave Rennie, uh, the sports science team have done, done a really good job because the game's coming thick and fast. So they've got to be available, like you see, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday. And there's the uh, the Blues warming up there. So what's, do you, what do you think the biggest threat is? that we see from Birmingham City. I think with Dini out the team, they might try and play a little bit more than what we expected. Uh, we did expect them to go direct into Trini, uh, Dini and play off him, but I think they'll try and play a little bit. Um, but we just need to stifle it out, deal with that, and then hopefully hit him on the counter. And as far as we're concerned, the main points in terms of uh, Nigel Pearson's chat, do you think, what will his words of encouragement have been? I think, you know, build on the clean sheet from, from the other night. Um, but can we take those chances? Like we said, 45 cross in the box. Can we make it an upgrade where we end up with a goal? Mm -hmm. And the bench, of course, incredible. Uh, are we likely to see early changes, do you think? Possibly. Uh, depends how the game goes. But um, I think we, we need to keep the crowd quiet, obviously, and then just build on momentum of our style of play. And, and hopefully we can add those changes in if we need to. Great stuff. All right, Ali, thanks very much. Right, time to say goodbye to our viewers on Facebook and YouTube now. EFL re regulations mean we can't show the game, I'm afraid. However, Robins TV back on Wednesday.